As we started to do renovations on the older buildings at Flock, we became curious as to how others are managing their own renovations. One of our builder friends, Sue, introduced us to Emily and Paulus in Brookdendale. Emily moved back to the area to be closer to her father. After having lived in Europe for some time and noticing tighter-knit families and communities, she had wondered whether she could do the same by moving back home. Since that time, she has become actively involved in the local area, regularly penning a newsletter called The Old Mill, which helps keep the community in the loop with one another. She took us through some of her renovation journeys and introduced us to her father, Barry, and how they were able to connect their homes together to be nearer to one another. I grew up in this house. So oh, you it did? was built in the 1950s, I think. And I was, when I was born, the family was living in the house next door, in fact. And we moved into this house, and this was my bedroom right here. Wow. And you can see where the, this was the old wall. Yeah. And my sister's bedroom was here, and there was no you know, big window. And that was our um, kitchen, and the dining room was what is now our little um, butler's pantry over okay, there. Okay, where Paulus is, yes. you know, making a sandwich. Breakfast. <laughs> You're a little late for breakfast. Come on, what time do you wake up? <laughs> that was the, you know, the, the way it was. Uh, we wanted to make it different because we wanted to be near my father. Uh, at first we thought we'd put something in the backyard because there's a little bit of land out there. But Susan convinced us now it was going to be better to do this. And, and then she started saying, well, you got to get this stuff out of the, like, some, there were some beams. Well, like there was, was like a thing here. And she said, you have to take it out because he, for your vision, anything that comes down from the ceiling will make you feel sort of claustrophobic. Right. And this already has a lower ceiling, oh, Yes, right? it already so, has a pretty low ceiling. Yeah. So it's like, okay, Susan, so what else do we need to do? Oh, we have to move the stairs. <laughs> like well, so what? So did a lot of there work. There was a st the staircase was here. Okay. So we we would come in through the the porch out there, through the kitchen mm -hmm. and dining room, and then into the little kitchen, and then here was the stairs going down. Down, and then your bedrooms are right here. And then here. we walked around okay. into you know to get to the bedrooms. I see. Okay. And so she's like, okay, move the stairs, and I'm like, you, that's a thing, and she said, sure. So we moved the stairs. It's still a work in progress, obviously. Yes, because so. wherever there used to be the linoleum in the kitchen, that went. Yeah. And so now we're trying to put in oak that's coming. Right. That will then be matched. Has there been a supply chain shortage? No, or no, no, no. We got okay. that was before COVID. This okay. has been going on for a while. We ordered the wood before COVID, and it's still stacked up over there behind my desk. Okay. So you basically reclaimed the wood. You, yeah. you brought it back out again. You yeah. took away the linoleum. And then you're bringing in and restoring some of the, the wood mm -hmm. floors. Yep. Does it feel like your home? I know you're in the same vis general vicinity, but so now that the house is a little different. It feels f very different, but I, I, I love it. It's, it's got a, enough of the, the old structure to it yeah. and the memories. And, you know, okay, this was my, especially when you see where you know, the, the walls used to be and stuff. It's like, okay, this was our place and where I grew up and yeah. have um, great memories. And yet now it's got... A kitchen with a dishwasher because we never had a dishwasher, <laughs> and and there's way more, more 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 counter space yeah. and, and lighting. So it's got kind of the best of both things for me. So in addition to some of the upgrades and the modern amenities and reclaiming the floors and moving mm -hmm. some doing some structural changes you know with the beams and the staircases what are some of the elements that you started to consider because i know one bit of renovation leads to another oh yes it's an endless kind of yes. exploration so what are some of the other things like mm -hmm. did you upgrade your heating what was heating like beforehand yep. what, what it was oh now? oh you'll have to see this it was forced hot air natural gas in so it was a big thing in the basement uh -huh. which meant they had all these big ducts so it was like not only was it not, you know. Oh, so like big piping. Yes. And, yeah. Paul's could not walk down there. <laughs> he's too like, tall. He, he's, you know, he's he, everywhere tall. he went, he would, he would hit his head. <laughs> so it's like, okay, there's another excuse. We're gonna, you know, we really have to upgrade. Mm -hmm. So we went completely to these mini splits. Oh, okay, yeah. Look at that. This is a, like this is a thing yep. now. Yep. People love their mini splits. And because we were doing so much renovation, we were not limited to putting them on the exterior walls. Right. Because we just. You know, this was all bare, and we just ran the pipes and stuff in, and then we um, 
How has this worked for you? It's worked great. Yeah. Really, it's been even in the like the coldest yeah. nights. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. We, yeah. I don't think we've even maxed it out yet. So, do you only have one in your house? Yeah, we got a couple. Okay. So there's one over here. Uh, did you also improve the insulation? Then? Yes, we did. We took all of the it, these interior walls off wow. yeah. and blew in the insulation, mm. except for one little spot upstairs, with, which was a little more modern. It was an add-on, 20 years ago or something. So we thought, well, we'll leave that. Mm. And now I wish we'd taken it out. <laughs> Okay, so heating. Oh, here so there's we go. another one. There's another one. And um, while we're here, I'll say this is what I want to make into my home practice, which was another one of the design elements. I said, Susan, it has to have this, this, this. <laughs> well, it's important. It's important to have a roadmap and a vision, right? right? Or yeah. else you're not going to get this. Yes. Up. So, do you do healing body work? Yep. Okay. And so we, we this was a closet mm -hmm. before that opened that way. So we just turned the, you know. We took out the back of the closet, you yeah. know, made a doorway through. We added an extra door to go into the bathroom so that I can have, you know, clients in here and they can go to the bathroom without going into our house. Yeah, that's perfect. So um, they could just basically come into the front door yep. and never see any yep. part of your house. This is its own little yep. section and room. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really smart. Ooh, tell me about those. Oh, yes, yes, we have to talk about those. <laughs> This might, uh, for us. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. know. This is, these are amazing. They, they're from some small family that makes them in Vermont. And they've been making them for decades, but they're great. And they, um, they send you all the parts. You send them very specific measurements of what you need. Okay, so and this is like this the quilt stuff. that you'd have underneath your bed almost to protect your mattress in a way. It looks like that. Yeah. But it's got a layer in it that's, um, you know, reflective so that it keeps the heat in and yeah. out. Um, and then it's all set up like this. We have to build, the, you know, the pretty thing that goes yeah. around the top. That's on the list. But it's great that it's open this way because now we can see kind of how it works. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you could easily build like a box around yep, it that's or the, even integrate the it in the wall maybe. But it does have this seal here on the side. And that makes so all that the difference. the air doesn't go past mm -hmm. it. And yeah. then this at the bottom. So it really yeah. it seals off the... I didn't even look at the seal. Of course. Yeah, that is perfect. So what does this do this to, the, window to the quilt. window? Um, like nor a normal window is not that energy efficient. So then, once you add this to it, if you look at their on their website and their video, they will show they'll have a picture of the outside of the house in winter, and they'll show you know with one of those heat cameras. Yeah. cameras, yeah, and you can see right where the windows are, the ones that don't have the quilt on them, but where the quilt is down, you don't see the window anymore. Right. And this then comes with the unit, then right? This okay. And then That's we, cool. and it's all, because you send the dimensions, they give you this all at the right thing. So I think we had to cut some bits off as we put it in ourselves. And yeah. Paul's had to build this little thing at the bottom. And well, I think so. this is really sensible because one of the things that Sonder has become really obsessed with, especially within like the renovation that we're doing to the, this tiny house, is that you, know, you lament the fact that you want windows because you want the light you want the in, light. you want to yep. see some of the view. But the problem is that the R value of windows is not great. It's not like you're having a wall there. So, no, oh, no, no. So what you could do, you know, with the shades, mm -hmm. especially if it's like west facing or, you know, not necessarily a south facing window. But even mm -hmm. we have a south facing window. It gets too much heat sometimes. And you do want to actually, you know, pull, yes, absolutely. pull the window shades well, We down. should go from here upstairs. Okay. And I'll show you the other, because I ordered two kinds of these windows. So these ones are a different style. They are the, the light blocking ones yeah. for bedrooms. Oh, that is nice. That's a cool pattern so, too. Yeah. And it's not, it looks like it's holes, but it's just, it's like melted or whatever. It's not letting huh. the air through. So do you think these are actually more insulative? I don't think it makes any difference on the okay. insulation, just on the... The light. Oh wow! Yeah. So you get that, really. I mean, you really could effective. sleep. <laughs> Sandra's like, I can't even see anymore. <laughs> now, are these oh, like yeah. uh, just regular double pane windows, or are they kind of special windows? They're not. At all? They are good windows. Uh, I'd have to get Susan to say exactly what. Yeah. They were not the top top of the line. Yeah. But they were good. It's not vinyl. It's fiberglass. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, well, it gets really expensive when you want to get super high quality windows, yeah. and it's just not—it's yeah. not realistic. Mm -hmm. But you then, know. if you add something like this on it, 
it can help drastically, especially at night. Like you're using it as a shade to make yeah. it make the room dark. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're not looking out of the window when you're asleep. So might as well make it more yeah. insulation value. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. so when your father moved to the house next door, mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's one floor. Like this could we be can a little... We can go over there too. He's okay. been warned. Okay. So this could be a little precarious when you're... When you get a little older and then you have right, stairs. Right, yes. And so, you know, going up and down, it was really hard for him. Plus, he would do his little exercises in the basement, and then he oh. would eat here, and then he would sleep upstairs. Yeah. And that was hard, because he's got COPD as well, so all of the stairs was Yeah. Difficult. It's one thing as my father starts to get older, he's like, I, want, I just want one floor, you know? And he's mm -hmm. not, he's not, he's in, you know, great physical shape, but... Still, yeah. Yeah. So this used to be the... Um, we had like a screened-in porch, yeah, big porch. And so, hey there, hello, good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. You're on camera. You're on candid hello. camera. Hello. It's my father Barry. Somewhere oh, Barry, this Sandy. is a, this is great. You have so much light here. So we set this up with one large mini split here, and then a smaller one in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And decided to go with the, the great room thing that has your, your uh, kitchen, dining, living, yeah, all open in room, one. Yeah, a whole open plan, which is amazing. Yep. This is yeah. my warmer, my den. <laughs> and my your study. little, your work area here. Work. What do you fancy these days? What are you working on? Well, right now I'm working on my income tax. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fun <laughs> Sorry at all. Sorry to be so <laughs> trivial. Uh, but it is that time of year, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a retired professor of English from Cornell, so yeah. I've been working on it. Shakespeare project for a while. Oh, one of my friends who absolutely is in love with Shakespeare and did a little Shakespeare theater would actually love to hear that. How do you like mm -hmm. being so close to your daughter here? Oh, it's a big benefit, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. And my daughter's husband, who, as you know, is a handyman yeah. and a chef. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite meal that he ever cooks? Anything that has mushrooms in it. Mm. It just has a real touch. Yeah. And I have a real craving. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really good mushroom year this last uh, fall. Well, yep. Yeah. I don't know if you got, go and forage and everything. We no, kind of missed I the boat to, on. I have to, you know, the these are the things like, on my list. I want to... The chanterelles were, we heard were like really off the hook. Well, I, I heard that you were like the unofficial mayor here. You no, were no, really no, involved. No, no. My, my wife Molly, she yeah. was certified unofficial. <laughs> <laughs> and Emily has acquired some of those same authorities and powers and responsibilities so yeah yeah and then wh what does that mean to you being involved in the community and especially like coming back after many years into the community mm -hmm. re-engaging it with it with your dad and everything along yeah. those lines well it's been great i mean i because I, I lived 15 years in europe and i could really see the people around me there would stick it stick with their families and there would be traditions going back for you know, generations hundreds of years and and it was just so normal, and I got to thinking, well, yes, why, why is that not so normal in America? People, you know, they move a lot because their jobs change, and they go somewhere else, and they, you know, they lose contact with their community. But it didn't happen that way when I was growing up, and I wonder if Caroline is still like that. And so when I would come back here to visit, I would check and say, okay, you know, there, there's still, you know, a lot of people knowing each other and doing yeah. things together that aren't because they're blood relations or because they're work colleagues. It's right. because they are neighbors. Yeah. And that small town feel, right? Yeah. It's still it's, it's still here in it's, it's America. It's definitely here still. You you don't you don't achieve it necessarily in some of the major cities, but mm -hmm. you you can achieve it here. I see it in the names of roads, you know, the families who have lived there for right, yeah. you yep. know quite some time or whatever, and then you still see the same families with those names on the road. Mm -hmm. And some of those folks even sharing land spaces or they've, you know, taken out a chunk of land and they give that to their daughter or their son mm -hmm. or their cousin or something. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. How long have you been in this area? And did Cornell bring you here in the sense that like or or did you have some deeper relationship with the university? My wife and I came here in 1963 because of Cornell, mm -hmm. simple as that, and I've been here ever since. <clears throat> yeah, 63, so that's 50 plus years, I yeah. guess, more or less. And where did you move from back then? Well, my wife and I were both students, grad students, in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I grew up in Boston, 
went from there to Chapel Hill and then from Chapel Hill to Ithaca yeah. or Brooktonville. <laughs> because as Emily may have explained, mm. Molly and I moved into the house next door. That's right. Mm. Rental house, which we occupied for a few years. Mm -hmm. Looked around the county to purchase when I got tenure and so forth and finally decided the house next door, literally, this one, well, that one, mm -hmm. that was the one we really desired. So the kids helped move their paraphernalia across the vacant lot. We got some photos of that. <laughs> the, the neighbors who were here, the same ones who are here now, and the neighbors up the street, two families, we were just like constantly, it was like one big family. It's like you just walk into each other's houses and you take stuff out of the refrigerator and, and you sit down with the kids and you eat and then you go play in their bedroom or in the backyard or in the, at the creek or out in the backwoods. And it really it was like this communal family growing up yeah. experience on our road. And then how do, you, how do you try to foster that through some of the stuff that you're actually doing in mm -hmm. Brooktondale? Because I know you do the Old Mill newsletter. Yeah. I know it's a little... You have to get it out, so probably after this, out. you're probably going to have to get the <laughs> newsletter out. But like, how are you trying to foster that, especially now that you know, some of the demographics and the energy probably has changed since when you yeah. grew up here? Yeah, I know people from all, you know, sort of walks of life around here. Either because I knew them as a child, or I knew them from, you know, together going to the pancake breakfast, or or at the store you run into people. Um, and I, I like to, to just listen and, and learn their stories and, and now I'm starting to write about them a little bit in the old mill. And it, I like to encourage other people because there are people who have either been here forever and haven't like seen other perspectives or there are people who have come here very recently and that don't know really the perspective of the people who've been here a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And so just to you know, try to create some dialogue and some exploration there. Yeah. It's and you're in such a nice little area right here too, because Brookton's Market, mm -hmm. so nice. They make such great sandwiches and everything. I think that's mm -hmm. probably where we're gonna get lunch afterwards. Yes, too. Yes, I would recommend, I recommend that. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you have your little farmer's market around here too, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So there's a lot of things that I think that probably have come as people start to move outwards, you mm -hmm. know, especially because Ithaca has gotten so, um, you know, there's a housing shortage there. It's gotten expensive for folks, um, which you could probably see. The university helps mm -hmm. and encourages yeah. that probably, but. But it's but, definitely creating tension. I don't know which way you drove yeah. into town because there is the sense that, especially in Brooktondale, we've become a little bit of a, you know, a suburb. suburb of Ithaca. Yeah. And so we all love the market. But there are people who've been here a long time who say, you know, it's just, you know, these yuppies coming out here and they want their, <laughs> you know, their style of living and, you know, what about our farm? And, yeah. and so that's the thing I'm really working on now is to try to meet with farmers and find out how can we make your life here still be productive. And I know it's, it's a really hard time to be a farmer because yeah. the prices are so low. And if you don't have a huge amount of land and you're doing the whole agribusiness monoculture thing, it is really hard How do you to live out in existence. Yeah. So I'm hoping yeah. we can find ways to create more local markets um, for a direct farmer to, you know, food to fork, farm to fork or whatever yeah. the, little, the <laughs> idiom is, so that the farmers can make more income from that, and it would be win-win for everyone. Yeah, I think that's. Um, I think that it starts with having conversation and dialogue, and even if it is through a newsletter or just sitting down with folks and. Because what I have found out, especially you know, kind of moving back to a small town, is that uh, you often have way more in common with your neighbors than you realize it mm -hmm. if you just actually took the time to sit down. Even if it's like you, you vote across political lines, you probably have way more in common with that, that person and, you know, than, than you would ever have known. But you just have to put your assumptions aside mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and have, that, have that dialogue. So it's great to hear how you're kind of engaging and creating like re-engaging your roots here, you mm -hmm. know, where you came from. It's so nice to see that and obviously you know that the, the benefit of having, you know, your daughter around, it's just incredible. Like everybody would want that for themselves, um, I think. And so, yeah, 
Thank you so much, and thank you for letting us into your home as well. well thank you for uh, taking an interest in recording all of this. You could watch it with your, your kitties afterwards. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, cool. Barry. This is really wonderful. We're reinvesting 10% of our Google AdSense proceeds back into this area. And this will be matched by our partners at Espoma Organic, which gives us more of an opportunity to make a direct impact in our community.